On this episode of That Kingsville Podcast, we've got a special guest, Christian LeFay from Brado Development Corporation, talking about 183 Main. Oh, yeah, they, they were the uh, developer on the other side of the coin of everything else that we heard from, you know, all this issue. So Christian joins us, talks about what happened throughout the progress uh, of the acquisition of the property and the development proposals and whatnot, and then now the new uh, revised site plan uh, uh, proposals and what's going on there. Yep. Uh, we talk about uh, happenings in the town of Kingsville, sports awards, and more. Stacy, there's, there's a roof that's a little leaky. Leaky roof facilities review. We touch on that. Join us for that Kingsville podcast. That Kingsville Podcast brought to you by Kingsville Brewery. Guess what, guys? They got a new beer, and it's fantastic. Had it last week. They want to introduce their new cerveza to everyone. So their beer is called beer. It is called Mexican beer. Mexican beer. Cerveza. It's Spanish beer. In honor of Ontario Craft Beer Week, they're excited to introduce their newest brew, Kingsville Brewery Cerveza. Brewed locally from grown corn from Harrow, Ontario. The cerveza is light, refreshing, and perfect for those warm summer days. Cerveza is a limited run brew that's only available while supplies last and available exclusively in their online brew store, Beer Garden, and Tap House 127. Which, by the way, if you guys haven't been to Tap House 127, we had dinner there last Friday. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, it's so good. Yep. Steve, been- you been there yet? No. You take, your lo- <laughs> take your lovely wife. You go. You know, honest, honestly, we've been so a, good. a handful of times. Nothing on the new menu is it, it, like uh, it's so hard to dis- decide what it is. There are no duds. There are no duds. You don't look at the menu like, well, who's getting that? Yeah, no, no. You, it's tough to decide. I'll get, get your hands on this perfect summer brew before they're gone. Free shipping on all orders to Windsor, Essex County, Wheatley, and Tilbury. Click. Oh, no, no, no. Click the link. No, no, we're not clicking any links. It's on the on the podcast. But uh, don't forget, also, it's EDDK Maybe Week. Maybe click yourself. Yeah, click. Yeah, bing, I'm there. It's also EDDK Week at Tap, Tap House arm. 127. Uh, join them for an amazing three-course menu that will leave you wanting more. Indulge in the delicious Tap House bruschetta, followed by a mouthwatering ahi tuna poke stack. Top it all off with braised bison short rib, which I had, and it was fantastic. Italians would say that bruschetta. Bruschetta. Anyway, thank you, Kingsville Brewery and Tap House 127 for sponsoring that Kingsville podcast. Welcome to that Kingsville podcast. I'm your host, Dave. That's Kevin. That's so. Steve. Special guest with us today, Christian LaFay from Brado Development Corporation. Thanks for coming in on the show today, Christian. Thank you for having me. So, uh, gentlemen, it's uh, it's the equinox. It's uh, fully the longest the solstice. day. Solstice. It's solstice. Yes. Sorry. Equinox. That's fall and spring. Right. Longest day of the year. I apologize. <laughs> Listen, I'm not, I'm not I, an astronomer. Honestly, until the moment you said that, I never realized that, yeah, one's it a is. solstice and one's, one's an equinox. equinox. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh, okay. yeah, they were both GM products. Honk, honk. That's for all our fans. What? Yeah. They just get a honk. <laughs> the Chevy Equinox and the Pontiac Solstice. Okay, fine. Anyway, enough banter. Christian's not here to listen to us. Yip, yep. Longest day of the year. It is long. long. Today is the longest day of the year? It, today is the longest day of the year. Yeah. Because uh, as as the, the sun over. was shining bright at like quarter to six this morning yeah i was out walking the dog yeah i yeah, didn't want so to get was I. you were i saw you hey won't see you tomorrow small town i was in I'm bed up that early and <laughs> and just swearing at my window why didn't i shut the blinds tighter stupid <sighs> you know, priorities Ugh. got an adult hard well christian uh you're here for a very good reason you're making a lot of news in the town of kingsville so it, it, for our audience's purposes you, you haven't really been that public in kingsville but you had a lot to do with some stuff so you know can you tell us about who you are and, and what Brado Developments is? Uh, sure. So uh, in 1957, my grandparents came here from Italy. Um, my grandfather was a chemist, uh, had no construction background, started uh, getting into that and started suburban builders in 1957, building mostly churches, arenas, schools, um, a lot of um, big V's back in the day. Um, so <laughs> we had one. Actually, our office is in a big V in uh, Indy Cumsy. So, see, I, I, I like you already because you're still calling it big V. And wow. when, like, there's a generation of kids out there that have absolutely no idea what that well, is. Well, we did yeah. a contest on Instagram just asking people <laughs> if they remember who the original tenant was, and everybody was shopper, shopper, <laughs> shoppers, shoppers, shoppers. And, you know, a couple of people got it right, but it took a while. So, but uh, yeah, so my uh, my uncle uh, got involved in the company and, and kind of changed it over to suburban homes uh, a, a while back. Um, and then I got involved. Uh, 
and we've changed it now to do mostly commercial, uh, larger residential stuff. So we uh, develop under Broader Development Corporation and build under suburban construction. Um, so third uh, third generation, uh, and I have a son coming. Any could be any minute here. So well, it, oh, keep your phone closed. So yeah, could be, could it's be, right okay, there, just in case. Here could be any minute. Okay. So, hey. so hopefully four generations, which is uh, exciting. Congratulations! So. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So Brado Developments in Kingsville Development owns, Corporation. Development Corporation. Sorry, uh, owns which property? So we own one eight three Main officially now, and. The, so that the sales to gone through. Yeah, and we closed last. Jeez, uh, it's been going on for so long that <laughs> this is how long it's going on. So, so I was sitting in my backyard when I found this property before my daughter was born, and she'll be four in September. Wow! So that's going to tell you how long this has been going on. So, um, it, it's got to be a year now, I guess. We've we closed on it a year ago. So one eighty, just in case people. Uh, don't remember 183 Main is the property across the road from Migration Hall next to the empty lot. It's, it's kind of across from the new medical center. And, is it more and across part from of the, the high center? Center? Yeah, yeah because okay. Migration Hall looks right. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're it's right. It's in the heart of you're right. Like, he's from, yeah, you. He's from oh, is that? Yeah, yeah it's you're in right. the heart of it all. Oh, oh. it's in the heart of it all. Oh, I like that trademark. I got some better ones. I got some good, good. So, uh, so you were recently, so do we need to bring everyone up to speed on what Yes, of course we do. That's the story. Okay. So what, what is the, I guess we'll just say it because mm-hmm. it's, because it's public record. So basically 183 Main uh, had a bunch of different development proposals on there, which, and they, they were all part of your development corporation, right? Yeah, Christian? We, we started originally again, almost four years ago. So there were there were designs that were multiple con- condominium buildings. There there was a design that was uh, a single that was taller. The first one was brownstones in the front. Okay. Um, actually, my first idea was a gas station. And when I went to the planner at the time, he said, "Are you crazy? Do you have any idea what you're dealing mm-hmm. with here?" And I said, "Okay, well, let's let's think about this." But it's a great piece, so let's kind of backtrack. So the original plan was four brownstones. In the front, uh, Victorian style to kind of create like a nice streetscape. Uh, and I don't even remember what was in the back, but it would have been a five or six story building, something to that effect. Yeah. And then uh, and then it got changed. Uh, we went, yeah, we went to a pack meeting, a lot of comments, uh, buildings too tall. We don't like this. We said, okay, we'll build two smaller buildings. <laughs> and then it got changed. And then it got changed. And, and, changed. Uh, and, and so it ended up, and I think the last we really heard about it publicly in in at a council level uh, was uh, it was going to be a three story in the back, right? That would have been in March twenty twenty one. Okay, March twenty twenty one. I went to council, mm-hmm. which was um, at that point basically we were they had during that whole process they uh, had uh, started the process to de- designate the house which we appealed um, during that process, during discussions. Um, it was brought that it's in our interest if we want to lower it to four stories and have the appeal go away that, you know, looks like there might be a deal to be done. So we dropped our appeal on the designation and we uh, went to council for a three-story building with the house remaining as is. We, it's a heritage house. We're going to leave it. Uh, we'll create its own lot, sever it, bring it to someone who who wants a heritage home, right? We didn't take this on looking to acquire a single family home. We just want to build, you know, new housing units for people. And, and that's our thing, right? Um, and obviously, we know council turned that down and uh, we went to the... We went to the OLT. Yeah. yeah and, and at that time, we had actually done a podcast on it and, and not really knowing... I don't think what uh, administration's recommendation had been to council. We kind of guest yeah, at it yeah. um but we knew looking at at some of the case law at the olt there had been very similar cases in in uxbridge and some others around the gta um that had the exact same thing happen the the development very shrewdly was designed specifically to match the official plan um density so yeah. that there was really no um, legal way that the council could turn it down because it matched their official plan, it matched their zoning bylaw, 
Um, it was just a matter of they didn't want it. Well, really. the, and that, even the single family home, like that, that lot accommodates a single family home with the setback. So it almost worked out. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, obviously the land shape is what it is, but it did work out in that case where the house just happened to be where it was and, and all that. Right. So then, uh, so then council, uh, turned it down, goes to the OLT council loses at the OLT. They spend, uh, during that time, uh, reported, uh, through an FOI request of ours, uh, over sixty thousand dollars in legal fees um, and and other fees, other consultant fees. Um, that's a very from from all accounts, it's a very low um, uh, estimation on the amount of money that they spent. But it was around sixty thousand ish. Um, and then uh, and then after a loss in OLT, um, we didn't really hear much other than. The, at that point, there is a three-story condo building approved at the back. Um, the build the house that's there is the house that's there. Um, and then it changed. So um, uh, Brado, yourself, uh, and your company went to uh, the Heritage uh, meeting. And now there's a new plan. So tell us about the, the new plan that's in place. Yeah, so... Um Originally, when we were acquiring this property, we had time to do the building. So we would have went right away if it was approved. The units would have been built. People would have been living there. We probably wouldn't be here. Um, <laughs> Most definitely not. It's, you know, so that's 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 where we're at with that. Um, during the process, we took on a large project in LaSalle. We're building two towers there, 70 units behind the Rexall and Sprucewood. Um, great spot there. But um, so we're committed to there for a while. So, you know, once we got our approvals, we weren't planning on starting, so kind of just sat there, kind of just regrouped. Um, we got our decision back in August, so you know, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Um, kind of grabbed the file again and just started playing around some ideas, um, visiting the house, seeing seeing that it's deteriorated because it took us three years to, to go through this process. But the house was vacant for that previous, sorry, it was vacant uh, before that for three years while the owners were trying to sell it. So up until last August, it was vacant for six years. No money was being put into it. You know what happens if you don't put money into a house. So, you know, east trough, you know, trees trees hitting this and that. Um, so I kind of looked at, went out and looked at the house, pretty poor condition, just trying to like evaluate our best best steps. Um, obviously with what you, we all know what's happening with the province and density. Um, and it just kind of started playing around with some ideas. So I reached out to, um, a company in Toronto called ERA, which are heritage planners and experts. Uh, and if you look them up, um, I'm a little biased because they work for me, but I, I would say they're the best in the business. <laughs> but uh, Of course they are. It's so, the hardest earned money. But locally, just, just to tie it into the local. So they did the um, Windsor Arms for the University of Windsor. They did Kennedy Collegiate Co uh, College recently, which they're up for a national award. They did the um, Senate building for the government of Canada. Uh, King Edward Hotel in downtown Toronto, a ton of stuff for the University of Toronto. They have 150 between Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa. Uh, they're not paying me to say this, even though it's probably <laughs> sounding like an ad. Um, <laughs> so I reached out to them, and um, uh, coincidentally, the the gentleman, one of the partners there, his name is Scott. Uh, his aunt lived in Kingsville. He's originally from Windsor. He moved to Toronto a while a while ago, so he's got connections here, um, roots here. And um, I was just kind of explaining my idea, and I said, listen. How are we going to get this thing down to the ground? Because I don't want this house. We need more units. It's just not going to work. And, um, you know, he kind of, we just went back and forth and, you know, looking at all the options. And I said, well, what about if we move this house, save the house, make it like the face of the development where people pull in, it's there, repurpose the house as either a single family home or maybe some type of low commercial use. And um, he thought that was a great idea. So we kind of looked at the logistics of that. We met with a house moving company, a local company, a uh, structural engineer. The house is sound to move. Great. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now. My, my uh, our, 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 I guess our pitch or proposal would be, we want to move the house up to the front where it can interact with the people walking on the street. Right now it's pushed back. Uh, we're going to re-landscape it through ERA. They're going to set... Um, uh, a list of things that we need to do to bring the house back to a, a very good condition. Um, new window, new roofs, repoint the brick, again, landscaping it. Um, and uh, and then with that, we'll be able to build, uh, if approved, um, a five and a half story building because it has a walkout terrace and uh, with 42 units on the same piece of property. 
and conserve the home. So in our, our mind, our trade-off is um, let us move the house. We'll fix it up. We'll make a nice showpiece. Um, and then the other part of that is we're going to, or we're proposing to, I don't want to say we're going to because it's not approved yet, but we're proposing um, the Esther Jasperson Park, which is right off the sidewalk. We're going to do a commemorative plaque, which ERA would would do based on the history. People can walk up the sidewalk and actually now understand that this is a heritage house. This is why it's here, where now it's, you know, set back 50, 50 feet, 55 feet. No one really knows it's there. No one knows why it's there. Um, so that's the idea. Bring it up to the front. Obviously, it's in my interest to build more units. So that's why we're doing it, to be honest with you, moving the house so you can build more units. Mm -hmm. But there's a community benefit there, which is conserving this home, preserving this home, uh, making it something that everybody can enjoy and understand. It's a significant size property, and I get it. You're a businessman. This is your livelihood. But at any point, did you just think this isn't worth it? I, I don't want to deal with these <laughs> this community because this is I, I'm just you know I, I mean, yeah. I'm sure you, you've run into obstacles before I mean nothing ever goes smooth but was there a point where you just said no you know what well, forget it it's it's I, I often find that a lot of people don't want to speak out I've, I received a ton of calls and emails especially from business people saying you know keep fighting you know we want to see this people are afraid to go out and speak on Facebook when there's a you know for example a small group let's just say of 10 or 15 or 20 people that are going to attack people right they People have better things to do. They don't want to go on there and engage in that. But behind the scenes, they, they want it. You know, people need housing. I mean, we see that now, right? Um, so for us, it was really never an option to walk away. I, I knew that uh, we'd be successful at the Ontario Land Tribunal. We, we hire the best planners. We hire the best lawyers. We hire the best experts. They give me good advice. You know, we've been doing this for a while. So even to talk about quickly about our current situation, um, I'm confident in it because the heritage is being conserved, right? Right now, the way it is, it's not, it, it's, you know, the house is designated, right? So what happens after that? What happens in the next hundred years to this house? There's, there's very minimum standards of property, right? I, I don't have hundreds. This is literally going to be probably 300000 to $400,000 of restoration work. I don't have that type of money to throw at it with a 22 unit building. Yep. I do at a 42 or 45 unit building. There's extra money there. I also have, you know, $200,000 in costs previously, which, you know, we're going to leave the past in the past and, and move on. I'm okay with that. It ha whatever happened, happened, you know, it, it is what it is. I just want to look at what we're at now and what we can do moving forward. Um, so the short answer is no, we never, we never considered walking away from that. The, uh, so you, that the plan you just laid out, that was approved at the heritage committee, right? So. Uh, no, well, so th th this is, it's a really complicated process from here. So we went to the heritage committee in advance to explain our, our proposal. So we brought down, uh, Scott from ERA. We did a presentation, um, went through, went through, um, what we're looking to do to more or less get a nod from them in advance. So they unanimously said, we like this idea. Now that heritage committee only has really from the house on is, is their responsibility. They're not talking about the size of the condo or, or the loading space or the parking spots or any of that. They're just there for the heritage. So from a, from a heritage only perspective, they liked what we were uh, proposing, which is move the house, fix the house, save the house, conserve the house. Esther Jasperson Garden, Esther Jasperson Parkette, that's what they nodded to. So what happens from here is we um, f submitted a, um, uh, pre-consultation requests. So now our application or our concept has been floated around to all the departments for comments. It'll come back to us hopefully by next week. From there, we'll determine what we need to ask uh, for uh, with regards to um, zoning and stuff from the town. And then we'll make our formal application. It will go, um, this is where it gets a little confusing. So from there, it's going to go back to the Heritage Committee as an actual formal application. Uh, and then it will go to council uh, for whatever we're, we're, we're asking for. And the, the council request, I would assume, would probably be a, a bylaw amendment, right? A zoning bylaw amendment? So uh, right now, because we actually never severed the property, even though we're able to, the back part has uh, our special R3, one, whatever the definition is for our, our um, condo building. The front part of the property is still residential. Mm. So we're going to go ask for the entire property to have the same zoning, which is not unreasonable because it's not, it's abutting and it's, it, 
it's still one property. <clears throat> um, the, the nice thing about what um, what we're what we're doing now is um, at the OLT we were given um, guidelines for set, uh, side yard and rear yard setbacks. This new proposal is actually going to increase those. So um, the condo building is now going to be farther away from the house on the west, and it's going to be farther from the houses, but future houses in the, in the uh, south. So we've actually improved some of the the, the things <laughs> that were given to us. The and councils in the position where you're going to present a, a zoning bylaw amendment, which I would assume and don't comment on this if you can't, but I would assume it'll be fairly similar to one that they just approved on Division Road, which was six stories, and it's a pretty similar lot size if I if I think about it. So they're and they they uh, to quote. The council begrudgingly approved uh, that one because they uh, had no other choice, as they were told. Um, so I'd assume this is probably around the same sort of lines. Well, I'm not really going to speak to what I what I think of some facts here, I guess, right? So we're now considered high density, and the official plan has no height requirement for high density. Um, so... We're asking for six stories, well, six in the, the one section and five and a half in the other because we can only hit 52 units in the way kind of our module works. We're going to do a nice rooftop terrace so you'll be on the uh, sixth floor, um, or, you know, overlooking overlooking things. Um, we could ask for higher because the official plan has no height requirements. We're anticipating that uh, six will be the maximum based on what I've been looking at and our team's been looking at that they're trying to implement in that area. I think we're in zone two. They want to have it no more than six stories. So we're trying to, um, Oh, he's, he's aware of the main street development committee. Right, so, so we're trying to, uh, we're trying to work within what we expect they want to see. Um, so instead of asking for seven or eight or, or whatnot, we're, we're going to stay, uh, maxed at what we think the max will be come September, October, whenever that, uh, that comes into place. So, sorry. Oh, so, it, you know, this being your first development in Kingsville, correct? Uh, we did some townhomes behind the Zares and that kind of stuff, but small stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. The big, big scale project. Yeah. So, because of the way that the uh, the this scenario has kind of transpired, do you anticipate that this process with these revisions is going to go smoothly, or is going to go similarly towards the way it did the first? four times i'm ca cautious, cautiously optimistic that <laughs> we can work this out i think we're, we're bringing a lot to the table we already know a condo building's coming there that was a big hurdle to to go over um you know everybody at least seemed to really want this house which we understand we're now going to keep the house we're going to improve that and actually make it nicer yeah and, and if i may on yeah. your website you have this uh proposal yeah with some renderings that yeah. are showing the proposed building sure. movement yeah. at the parkette so yeah. you're not just talking you're actually no. showing so we're evidence. you know i've kind of went through all this you know what if uh what if christian does this what if christian does that <laughs> uh stuff so uh when we went to the heritage committee i came right out and said we'll put up a hundred thousand dollar bond uh that the town will hold in trust and uh until era who's a you know they're a reputable company that you know they have code of ethics and th they're professionals so when they sign off that the house has been moved safely that we've done these restoration things i get my money back um so that'll that'll hopefully alleviate the people saying you know what happens if he drops this house on its side <laughs> <laughs> uh, that happens if he runs down the street with the house yeah. and it disappears. Oops. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what <laughs> we're just trying to get ahead of some of those things. So I, I guess to answer your question, hopefully it goes smoothly because we're trying to get ahead of some of these yeah. these these bumps in the road. Um, and you know, bringing on a company like ERA, uh, I think it shows shows a lot. Uh, you know, just just the meeting alone and the initial report is going to cost me close to fifty thousand dollars. So that's the type of, yeah. of, of people they are and, and, you know, the work that they provide, right? They're, they're true experts. I, again, would say the best in the business in our, you know, in our area from here to Toronto. So, um, yeah. the sp speaking of the economics and, and again, you know, don't, don't you don't feel like you have to comment if, if, if this is getting into, into business sure. uh, yeah. decisions, but the there are several condo buildings in Kingsville. Uh, well, two condo buildings in Kingsville up. Yeah. Um. There's two two more six stories that are fairly well underway. Sure. 
Um, the ones that are up aren't full. Um, and and uh, I think the, the newer one, the three-story, is maybe at 50% occupancy-ish. Um, it seems like to residents, and, and there's been some pushback, but... Um, and I, I, I don't want to just sound like, like leaning into the pushback because I actually am curious. Yeah. The people will say that that it's it's development for the sake of putting up a building, and maybe there's not demand there. Have you done any market research or or anything looking into whether or not you you're expecting to fill the building? So, we. We have a different process when we build. We do one building at a time. Uh, my uncle, my brother are on site all day, every day. I go back and forth throughout the day. We have a reputation for building quality. People in the business know, and it spreads around. Right now, we're doing a building in LaSalle. Um, we've sold seven residential units in the last 60 days, and there's a competitor building around the corner. They sold one. So I'm not so much concerned about what other people are doing. We do our own thing. This building here, uh, we, we don't just sell units. We create a lifestyle. So... This building here would have uh, about, so this, back to the building in, La, in LaSalle we're doing, it's 50,000 square feet. We have 5,000 square feet of amenities. We've got a club room, which is about 2,000 square feet with a full kitchen, fitness center. We're going to have a rooftop patio. We have a bike storage room right on grade with beautiful bike racks. People can come right in their bike. So we create more of a lifestyle. You know, we exceed, far exceed all the building code requirements for sound, all that. So we build a really quality product. So we believe there's a market for that type of, of, of product. Um, we also believe that the tie-in with the house, people come to Kingsville because they love heritage. Now they're living at this, ready for my line here? There you go. Uh, 183 Main, where heritage is home. Oh! That's, awesome. That's Ooh, good, right? Like so, so we believe that people will want to live there because of that instead of just a steel and concrete building, you know, behind um, behind commercial or, or whatnot. But I, I do hear a lot about, you know, all these buildings are sitting empty, all these units are sitting empty. And, and, and if I was a resident here, I would say that's the best thing in the world for me. Because the town got the development charges, taxes are being paid, and no services are being used. Yeah. So uh, if, if the buildings are empty, it shouldn't really concern the residents. They should, I mean, at the, it's not costing the town anything by having them empty. It's the opposite, right? They're collecting taxes and no services are being used. It, it does use up area that, that could be residential. I mean, it's not a lot. You're talking about maybe two or three homes instead of, you know. 40. 40. Sure. Um, uh, and a lot of people will say and that the looks are are too much, you know? Well, um, the, co the cost of construction, right, is not going down. It's it's still going up now. And even inflation, right? So there's a new mm -hmm. level here, right? So if you look, you know, the, the federal government's trying to um, stop inflation. They're not trying to go backwards. You know, if, if, an, if an apple is a dollar now, it's not going to go back to 90 cents. They're trying to stop it from going to a dollar 10. Mm -hmm. It's it's extremely expensive to build now. Land costs, the, the, the cheapest and most economical ways to build up. Um, we try to, you know, about typically in our buildings, it's one third young professional, one third middle age, which is typically sometimes a divorce situation, kind of, you know, or single person. And then uh, one third seniors. The young professional can't afford a single family home. Nor do they want to come home and cut a grass on a Friday night. You know, they want to go out and do their stuff. The middle-aged people have already been there. They want to lock the door, travel. And the seniors, either they can't afford to go to, let's just say, you know, a town home behind theirs, you know, 800, 850,000 with a finished basement, sometimes, you know, up to 900,000, right? Um, they can't afford that. They can afford 550 for a condo or 500. They're in 1,200 square feet, all brand new, around other people. Um, so I, I think these will take... These will fill up. I'm not, I, I haven't, I, again, don't pay too much attention to what other people are doing. But, you know, if you look at the one, I know a lot of people talk about the one on Park, Park, mm -hmm. Park it is. Mm -hmm. um, when my, when Scott from the Heritage, uh, my Heritage guy came down from Toronto, we parked at 183 Main. We walked all the way to the home hardware and looked at almost every single house south of uh, Main Street. And then we walked all the way down to Lakeside Park because he wanted to see the bridge. And then we walked all the way back. You know, I'm only 40 years old. I can't see too many people that would say, that living there, hey, let's go walk and have dinner. Mm -hmm. If you look where we are, you're two minutes from Zares, two minutes from the restaurants, you're going to get people walking. So when you talk about, you know, buildings are empty, you know, I think you need to look at where the buildings are, you know, who, who, who's building them, what type of amenities, that kind of stuff, because that really makes a difference. 
in your opinion, will we get to a point in Kingsville in the near future where there's too many? Not if the government keeps letting in 500,000 immigrants a year, which is, you know, what's happening, right? Everybody's getting pushed out of Toronto and all these other cities. You know, it's kind of like a difficult situation because we don't have enough people to do the work. So we bring in more people, but there's not enough houses for them. That's the situation, right? But here in Kingsville, we're unique. We don't have that that uh, job center. There isn't a major employer in town that employs over 200 people. Yeah, but, right? the, but the seniors get pushed out of these bigger areas. They come from Toronto. Right. They come from London. They come from Hamilton. And that's why some, some residents here I see, you know, oh, more people from Toronto, more people from Toronto. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting pushed out because every every level is bumping up a bit and they're getting pushed out. So they go to back to where their family was originally from or maybe where they used to vacation, right? Closer to the States, you know, less traffic. They can go down to one car, you know, everything's walkable. They can go for a bike ride, they can go to the winery. So it, it's not so much that people are coming to Kingsville, um, you know, just because there's jobs here. I think you're going to start see people getting pushed out of Windsor. You know, you got the Stellantis plant. Uh, there's more jobs, all the all the the, the feed off stuff there. So I, I, everything kind of gets pushed and moved around. So it's it's indirect stuff. And condos are 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 the way with the cost of construction. I you know you're seeing lots. There's one down the road from me in Lakeshore. Um, it's actually one of my lots, so I know so I know this. But it was <laughs> sixty feet by two hundred and ten feet, and we sold it for five hundred thousand dollars for a vacant lot. Wow. So. You know, we were selling a 2,500 square foot two story seven, eight years ago in that same subdivision, the first phase for $600,000. So it gives you an idea. I mean, you guys see it, you're mm -hmm. here, yeah. you see, Absolutely. you know, what, what things are going for, right? <clears throat> so with, with the understanding of what your development and the surrounding developments that are planned and or in the approval process immediately adjacent to your property in the South, yeah. is there any... Um, I guess, impact of what you would like to see that would, um, let, let, let's say, accentuate and or be complementary to what your development is rather than, you know, something that might detract. You're putting in a lot of effort, work and money into making this a premier location in sure, town. Yeah. And, you, you know, you're a developer, you understand costs. If, if there was something that you, you would a want to have in that location or not want what would those be well the, the plan next door uh, looks like it's going to be some townhomes uh the parcel in the front still undetermined i mean if i had to guess they're going to push for a condo building i mean why would they not push for a condo building right it fits right it fits it's there um you know i, I mean i can i only have so much control right we I, I know we can do on our property the house itself is going to be a, a big uh part of that right um and what about mixed commercial, green space, things like that? Is there something that, you know, hey, because of what you're you're advertising that this is the lifestyle that you're bringing, you know? Yeah, it would be great if there was a park next door, but I don't think that's going to happen. So. <laughs> we can agree. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, it, you, know, it, it, uh, you know, activity creates activity, right? So the more people come down here, um, you know, uh, the more the restaurants are going to thrive and these places are going to grow and you're going to get more stuff. And then the happier our residents are because there's, all these things here, right? So, um, you know, I, the the more in that downtown core, the better. Um, you know, the other thing too about parking and cars and and all that, right? We, all of our buildings, you get one parking spot. There's some visitor spots. Maybe we have a couple overflow spots, but you get one spot. The people that are coming here are realizing that they're either downsizing or they're single. Um, so, uh, you know, our buildings aren't going to. If, if you took a hundred condos. Let's just say I could put 100, 100 condos on my property. That'd be 100 cars. If I built 100 single family homes across from the golf course, you're probably going to have 250. Well, at least at least one car per unit, probably, you know, probably two. Most would have two and some would have three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And now all those cars, right, have to go to Zares. They're not, you know, they're not going to go all the way around. They're going to go down Main Street. Or, you know, we're, we're going to put condos there where, yeah, is the traffic busy? It's busy everywhere. My office is on Les Bronx and Decomsey. It's crazy. Everywhere I go, it's crazy. Our whole area is crazy with traffic, right? If you, if you look, if I lived at 183 Main and I pulled out of my driveway and saw a line of cars, uh, I don't know how far you could see down, but let's just say all the way to Jasperson and I was going to Zares, I would probably back up and I would walk the two blocks to Zares. You'd probably be faster. Right? You know, so that's, that's, that's what you, when you put people in that... <clears throat> 
in that kind of location where they can walk, right? They now we are going to be in a situation where and and when the Valenti buildings are finished, when uh, when your building is up, that there's the the population of Ruthven basically bordering the high school in in four pieces of property, and that doesn't count the at least one to, one condo building that's going to be in that sure uh, empty lot. That's a lot. That's a, that's a that is a lot of extra traffic, and and I don't disagree with you, and and I I think you lay it out well that you know what a lot of people are are going to probably walk to Zayers, but they're going to have to also go to Leamington at some point. Sure, and and so the or or into town for something, and uh, and so it is a lot of extra traffic. Um, traffic studies used to have impacts on on development. I I I know now it seems that that. At least in Kingsville, it's it it doesn't really as much as Irrelevant. as it used to, um, but I I I I actually sympathize with developers because because you you're in a difficult spot where you own a piece of property, you have every right, and and we've said it on this on this podcast several times, you have every right to do on that piece of property whatever you want to maximize your investment. You're a, you're a businessman. Like you should have the opportunity to make as much money as as you want, and 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 I I honestly think that that the idea to move the house forward is perfect. That that it's, is a it's that is a great way yeah. to. It, it satisfies, and it's it's a you're being a good corporate citizen. Yeah, right. You're 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 taking what the major issue was by the townsfolk, and when they verbalized it, and and made council do what they did in order to preserve what they felt was the the importance in town and you as a as a, a person company establishment developer are putting that as the the keystone of what you're allowed to do on the property which you technically didn't have to yeah so you know if if it's any consolation the the challenges that you guys have had to to face <clears throat> for getting to this point to Steve's point earlier about you know did you ever just consider giving up and, and moving on because of every roadblock you know to continue this far to to make this proposal yeah you've got to change the original scope of what it was that that you had proposed but as is your point economics have changed now i i still think that there's going to be a lot of opposition because of nimbyism and because it's a small town and there are a lot of individuals in Kingsville that have been from Kingsville their entire life. They haven't moved. They care about it. I don't know. See, the, the one argument I'll make is I don't know if it's NIMBYism, if it's a whole town. That is, well, yeah, because but, then yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you, but then it's not NIMBYism, it's public sentiment. Uh, and Fair. Okay. I used the wrong term, but it's... No, but I... I sorry to cut you off. No. But, but I, I do think that the, the NIMBYism term sorry we're getting on a tangent here but i i do feel the nimbyism term is used by politicians to be able to dismiss serious concerns sometimes it is and if it's a neighbor that's complaining about something that's happening next to them and and they're in their right that's nimbyism Mm -hmm. for sure if it's the majority of the community that's public sentiment and i and i think that politicians will sometimes call it nimbyism because it's easier to dismiss absolutely i will i think one of the concerns i've heard and and you may or not may or may not want to comment on this but regarding the five and six stories so you've got a lot of homes sort of backing off walker on station and railway and stuff maybe they have a fenced yard and a pool and stuff and all of a sudden they've got these towers going up and their sense of sort of comfort in their backyard of being out tanning or in the pool is gone yeah well our, our unit faces east west there we go and we only have Perfect. our our lot on our our building only has one single family home touching it okay right we've got main street on the front yep. we have one single family home to the west and it's all vacant land around it yep. so when you look at a lot of these other buildings that we're talking about there's a lot more homes you know, we've got, I don't know the, how many forget acres that is behind us, but I mean, it's, it's sizable, a very large piece yeah. of property, right? right? Yeah. It'll be the next, it'll be the next contentious point in for development. In sure. Sure. But again, these are concerns sometimes from people who just, they hear, oh, six stories going up and it's going up in my backyard. Well, I don't want yeah. I don't want to go in my pool anymore. And that, right. And that they're not, they don't know, well, 
how is it looking? What's the angle? I mean, yeah. are all these people going to be looking down at me while I'm well, we're, like I said, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're very far away from any, any homes. Um, you know, just the one next door and, you know, there's mature trees around there's they're screening things, you know, you can do, um, I, I, and I think the reason why I use the term nimbyism is because of that sentiment. People like they fear change. I'm not immune to it either. Right. Again, there's there's a lot of, of unknowns in life. And when certain things that people take for granted or feel that is the importance of why they're here and when it gets, you know, thrown in, in oh, apartment, that's that's big city. Oh, oh, bringing things in. So I think that your approach towards being very proactive with the heritage committee preserving that piece of property styling uh, uh, i'm going to assume I, I apologize yeah. i did look at the the website before yeah. i'm, I'm going to assume the styling of the building is in harmony with yeah we've, we're doing red brick and era had a lot to do with that red brick uh we're doing matching stone it's 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 going to look complement it without standing out too much um but not, not like the, the main and division apartment complex development from the 80s <laughs> so that that and there and that's where i wanted to kind of bring this to that development i want to say is the reason why there is so much opposition towards the the bigger scale developments we've seen in kingsville the medical building being one because of its size and scope i i, th I would say the yeah, i think you're right but i think that medical building set everyone off well because of the one story two story ten story whatever it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enough, right? The tallest two-story building I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and some and some things that weren't exactly public knowledge and or followed pro proper process. Yeah. Allegedly. So yeah, Christian, <laughs> coming coming back around. If there was uh if there was an opportunity to develop more in Kingsville, is this something that uh you and Brado would want to take on? Is there something that you feel that uh, you know, if this project is a success that you could see that you could also complement and build towards Kingsville, because obviously this is this is kind of how you're approaching what this development is at 183. Sorry, what was the tagline? The well, we're heritage is home. Here, we're heritage is home. So we we were working on some other properties in the area now for sure, which we're excited about. Not ready to necessarily share them, but uh, you know, I, I like Kingsville. We come here quite a bit. Um, uh, we go to the butcher of Kingsville probably twice a month come all the way out here um you know we like going to the restaurants walk around it's a nice nice town um i think a lot of people want to live here or want people to retire here we just want to do uh nice developments and bring bring people the opportunity to to come here and, and you know we only if you look at our locations all of our locations um are right in the heart heart of it all um <laughs> But if you look at our LaSalle location, it's right on the corner of Sprucewood and Malden, two grocery stores, everything's walkable. Uh, our last one, Lowe's on Edgar, same thing, plazas over there, walk to shoppers on the bus route. So we're, we're, we're about putting them um, in, in really good spots. Uh, you know, if, if you were to try to sell me a piece of property today, uh, the far end to go put a condo building, that's not for us. That's not, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that market of, of people getting in cars. People, um, when they go to a condo, they're either downsizing or starting out. They're um, they're giving something up, right? They're giving up a yard. They want a trade off, right? They want to be able to lock their and leave. They want to be able to walk downstairs and walk somewhere. So you got to give them something because you know if they're giving up a single family home, you know, like you said, a pool or this or that, you have to give them amenities. Um, you have to give them a reason to say get excited about it, right? So for us, it's about location uh, and the amenities, but locations is obviously key. So, like you mentioned, you come out here a couple times a month hit the butcher um a lot of that is because of the the feel of the town i'm sure and, yeah for and, sure and residents would argue that the condo buildings are going to hurt that is is that something that you think developers should should need to be concerned with well if, if you look at the position of our building right we're uh uh 65 65 70 feet off of main street we're, we're keeping it it's basically a three-story home that's a full walk-in attic in front I don't know how that 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 changes any of the character, right? Mm -hmm. um, do, do I agree? If I was building uh, a very modern, that that changed the character for sure. But if you look at our renderings, um, and again, some may say, "Oh, those are just renderings, not going to look like that." Go look at our last project. Look at the renderings and drive by. Look at the other project. Look at the renderings and drive by. We're big on this is what it's going to. This is we're going to tell people it's going to look like. It's going to look like that, even from our lobbies. If if uh, you look at uh, 7887 Edgar, look at the rendering, you can physically go there, corner of Lowe's on Edgar, look at the lobby. It's the same. 
outside of the building, the same. Actually, it's better because we improve it, but it's, it's, <laughs> the bare minimum will be the rendering. So for us, you know, I, I think if you look at, 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 our, at our renderings there, it ties into the house, red brick, stone, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good look. And again, everybody is going to have their opinion. Uh, what's Victorian? What's not? What's Kingsville? What should it look like? Um, so that's, that's obviously a, a difficult situation. But back to your question, um, preserving the character and charm, you need to do that. I think you can have buildings if they're done properly. Uh, I believe that the part of, of what the town's looking at now is um, scaling back so they're not going to have a six-story hovering. There's going to be a, like a line of a line approach, right? So it'll slowly stagger back. So the farther the building's back, you could do six stories, but if it's close, the first on main could be three and then it will stagger back just to keep the scaling down. Um, but our, our, our house, the heritage home is, is doing that for us. It's keeping the building back. Right. And from, from, uh, and in th those renderings that you see, there's a street view that that's realistic. If you were standing on the other side of the sidewalk, what you'd be seeing. Okay. So if, if, if everything goes well. And we get all our approvals in line. When are we putting shovels in to move the house? So if everything goes well, um, we'd be looking at weather permitting, obviously, right? Um, sometime early in the new year. Okay. And then from that, we obviously, you said the ERA has got the, the approval to make sure that all of the the movement and the refurbishment of the yep. house is acceptable. I'm assuming that the condo uh, development would, would carry on in concert with that. Yeah. You know. I mean, we'd, uh, again, back to what you said, we'd have to, you know, make sure there's a market there, make sure the markets um, is good for that. Um, you know, I, maybe we never build this. I don't know. Maybe we get the approval and uh, we're here five years now. You guys are asking me when we're building it, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case just based on, on on the growth and uh you know we all know what the province is doing for housing i think probably in the next year you're going to start see some big uh incentives for um for people to build um it's quieted down they, they had created these numbers of the number of units they wanted built um and i think i saw something don't quote me on this but windsor was like 10 percent of what the target was going to be or 13 percent of what was needed to hit these numbers our area right so if if that continues they're gonna have to do something to get get these houses here right yeah most and and again the the the, the economic climate the the situation for the demand and whatnot it, it's unpredictable it's something that you've got to anticipate with regards to um you know any kind of numbers and factors but more so your point about it being your your development you're not concerned with anyone else's involvement and or dealings you got to concentrate on your product. Yeah. And again, I, I, I think that by taking this approach that uh, you're being a great corporate citizen uh, with the town of Kingsville in order to make sure that the concerns that are reasonable that can be met uh, in order to continue with what your investment in the town of Kingsville is. So if I bring you guys to our job in LaSalle, one of you guys is going to buy one. Uh, we're That's not what'll end up happening. We're not leaving <laughs> things <though. laughs> No, in, in, over here you're gonna buy one. Oh yeah, over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, listen, we're all we're we're all on the other side of there, so you know we we're in those. Uh, <laughs> no, we'll wait, wait, retire. wait. We'll, no grass, you say? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Are there any trees on the corner of a street that can get cut down? Oh. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Christian, again, uh, we want to thank you for yeah, taking the for time and coming me. in. Thank you. Um, you know, we've we've talked a lot about this topic because uh, it was so sensitive for a lot of individuals in Kingsville, and there was a lot of misinformation and a lot of uh, I'm going to use a big word, vitriol. Is that that's yeah, a good one? That is a good yeah. one. That was that was spread around this, and ultimately, um, as Kevin pointed out, there's there's things that you're you're allowed to do regardless of whether or not the, the court of public opinion thinks otherwise. And ultimately, we wanted to make sure that we rounded out this whole story with having your end of, of things come through with regards to, you know, what transpired in, in council and, and whatnot. So we want to leave that in the past and move forward. That's that's our plan. Exactly. So, we so wanna, what happened happened. And uh, hopefully we're back. I'm, I'm back maybe to talk. Yeah. Hopefully it's a good news story. Yeah, and yeah. if it's not, it'll just make more comment for your oh. comment content for our <laughs> podcast. So hopefully it's a good news story. Yeah. So Christian, again, yeah, thank uh you. Brado uh Development Corporation. Christian LeFave, thanks for joining us on thank that you. Kingsville Podcast. Thank you guys. Thank you. That Kingsville Podcast also brought to you by Murray Insurance. You frustrated with your current level of service you get from your insurance company or concerned that some of your most important assets aren't covered the way they should be, whether it's your car, your house, your income. 
or your business, ask the professionals at Murray Insurance for a full review and get the peace of mind you need with your insurance. Call Murray Insurance today at 519-733-2331 or email service at murrayinsurance.ca. Today, for a great service, friendly local staff guaranteed same-day callback and claims concierge service. The number again, 519-733-2331. Thank you, Murray Insurance, for supporting that Kingswood podcast. Well, that was lovely for Christian to pop in and, you know, discuss the development, get, you know, some of the insight about the, uh, the changes that are, uh, hopefully pending. Very yeah. insightful. It, it didn't feel like just like he had one story. It felt like he had like six stories. <laughs> well, five but, and a half. Yeah. Oh. Plus the terrace. Plus the terrace. <laughs> <laughs> Now that summer's here, it's an active kind of atmosphere. We got the Highland Games coming just around the time when this podcast is going to go out. So that's happening at uh, Jack Minor on Saturday the 25th. Fourth? Fifth? Fourth. So, fourth. Yeah, fourth. 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 Yes. Sunday's the 25th. Right. Six months till Christmas. It's one day? Oh, geez. Saturday? Yeah, just one day. Saturday starts at 8 a.m. out of Jack Minor uh, Bird Sanctuary on uh, Road, Road 3. Three. So, you know, anyone who's uh, thinking about going out there, support uh, the event because, yeah, that's that's the first of the major happenings. And then in July, we start with Open Streets. Uh, there's a schedule that's posted on the kingsville.ca website. What was happening at high school? Oh, they had their athletic awards banquet last week. Oh, so yes. Some some nice awards. Um, I will say that uh, it was, it was, there's always a touching moment. There was actually a couple of touching moments, but, um, you know, the senior, senior male athlete of the year was Ty Murray and the senior female athlete of the year was Molly Cher. Oh. Um, the Brick Malott Memorial Award, um, the student award went to Erica St. Pierre. Um, the, there were two adult awards actually this year. Uh, one went to Brent Murray, who, um, I was, I was honored to present to. But um, he he's coached for several years at the high school. But I mean, beyond that, I mean, he's been a long time coach in Kingsville in a variety of sports. And also to um, Mr. Toes, Mr. Bill Toes, the principal who is retiring at mm -hmm. the end of the school year. Um, he was recognized. The other touching award that was presented to um, Mark Scher um, in his speech noted that he's been wanting to do something for a long time as far as a, an award. And... Um, the Zoe Stevenson Perseverance Award was presented to Zoe Stevenson, and um, she won her own award. Well, <laughs> is that the the first time that it's that's so this he is, announced so this it's is, the yes. first. So, right. so um, for for anyone who who doesn't doesn't know Zoe's story, just I believe that it's z o e j a n a dot com or something like that. Um, it's it's worth worth looking into, and it was it was a really um, it, it was touching, but it was it was a nice surprise. It was a nice surprise for her. This is a girl who's gone through a lot mm -hmm. um, to be where she is. She's she's lucky to be here with us, and um, you know the fact that she that that Mark has created this legacy in her name is 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 great. Awesome, it's fantastic. So, yeah, that's great. So that's a sign of a, a, a tight knit community, and you know the, these are the things, these are reasons why we love Kingsville. So yep, yeah, great. Thanks, gentlemen. Summer, it's here. Catch it well at last, because it'll be over before you know it. Canada Day, we won't be, we won't record before Canada Day. So no, and the the events are out. I see that they start. Uh, I don't know if it's around noon or so. No, yep. no it's in the morning, I believe. Ten a.m. at that, at the recreation complex until and then the, seven, and then the fireworks this year, not at the arena. No. no. Oh, really? No, Lakeside I Park. Right, and I believe it's because of the construction on Road Two. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Right. The, I'm, I'm going to get the longest construction project in the history of it, Kingsville. It, it will. It, it's Christian's buildings will go before the road stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I would assume that as a result of the construction and not wanting to bring a couple thousand people into that area because of it, having road closure, probably why they've moved it to Makes Lakeside sense. Park. Makes sense. I, I, I think maybe we should have just not done the fireworks this year, but who am I anyway? If you can't do them at the arena, which is, you know, traditionally, Steve, we've, we've gone out there. I'm sure you and the family. Been there a few times. Yeah. yeah. So. You, you should know. be able to watch them from my backyard. <laughs> oh, then they built all these houses. Oh, they're yeah, so we, we tall. Knew they were coming. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. we knew that was happening. It's all good. Oh, anyway, happy Canada Day. Happy Highland Games. Happy everything from all of us here at that Kingsville podcast. Hey, that first you. Open Streets. Wait, when is that? That's uh, the next weekend, right? It's the following. Is that weekend. the one that's the Lego... Over the entire block, an entire okay. block of Lego. Block party. I, uh, I can, I can only. The, like the, oh, here comes the puns. 
I, I, I honestly, I was just going to, uh, like, my feet are hurting just thinking about an entire block of Lego. I was, I was also going to say, it's like, how do you get to monitor all that Lego and it not walk away? On how much does all that Lego cost? Millions. Like, you ever bought Lego? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the smallest. Do we, is there a Lego rental company? Yeah. Like, how, what is the what is the running like budget for the Lego purchases? It's not real Lego. It's all the no name stuff. The kids are going. Oh, be like, Duplo. Ew. Why don't these stick together? <laughs> well, we'll hey, listen. Only time will tell. We'll be recording before that, so maybe we, we can. Oh, maybe we can get to the bottom of the Lego. Yeah. Maybe there's a, like a wholesale Lego hookup. Yeah. Well, like maybe, black market Lego, possibly. <laughs> We'll also find out what happened at the uh, Committee of the Holes review of the facilities review report that uh, was prepared. Sorry, I just have that website. I was wrong. It's Z-O-E-J-E-N-A dot com. Okay. Going back to the high school. Yeah, high school awards, right? Yeah, sorry. So. Um, also, if and I, I did look into this just in case anyone else is as anal about uh, <laughs> the way that council directions are written as I am. <laughs> Uh, so committee of the whole, the way that the facility review uh, recommendations are written, it says that um, that they recommend council do some specific things, but also the committee of the whole is directing mm-hmm. administration to do, to do a whole lot of stuff. He's just cutting out the middleman. Yeah, which seemed a little strange because committee of the whole's terms of reference and an idea of being was supposed to be that they make recommendations to council and then council makes the final decision. Um, but actually, uh, because I did review the terms of reference of the committee of the whole, um, <laughs> direct uh, council is permitted to give direction to administration if the CEO deems that council is allowed to give direction to administration. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So John Norton can decide if council is allowed to direct administration at the committee of the whole. Well, hey, yielding, yielding some some authority. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. So if you're wondering, yeah. yes, it doesn't. Some of it doesn't have to come back to council. No, it can it can be decided in a meeting that's held at the arena and or at the Grovedale House. Uh, coincidentally, on uh, Kingsville Public Schools graduation night. Oh, that's interesting. With that, hey, can I just read you? I know, I know, we're going. We're going over, along. I know, I know we're going along. I can hear the. Eight, Please, could I just I, because I feel like this one uh, <laughs> segment and the facility review is sorry. so much more. Sorry, Gary. It's it's sorry, Gary. I know I'm 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 killing things here. Uh, the facility review is so much more than just the Grovedale, uh, and and you know you don't want to just get bogged down in what the Grovedale is, but I, there was. <laughs> um, one uh, paragraph in the entire facility review. I thought that, and maybe you guys read it. Um, I read them. Or a lot of paragraphs in it. There, there were. There was one that was an interesting one. I thought. Um, remember when it was? When was the Grovedale built? Twenty eighteen. Twenty nineteen. And again, people uh, should not think that that. This is just about the Grovedale. It's about everything, and there's yeah. so much to it. Four, so much. To Fourteen it. buildings were considered, but the interesting part is, uh, though the Grovedale and it refers to it as the building. So, though the building is relatively new, there are some issues observed by Parks and Recreation staff related to building maintenance. This includes issues with the siding peeling off the building and water issues showing within the walls. <laughs> The floor is pitted in areas which has led to cracking and ceiling tiles showing signs of water leaking from the roof. In addition, the style of siding selected requires contracting specialized cleaning equipment as regular power washing damages the siding. Users and staff also note that storage within the facility is limited and additional storage should be considered. Users also noted that the kitchen space is undersized for their use. The town has invested in curtains to address audio issues within the facility, as well as a small stage and other improvements to make the building more functional with minimal investment. But I thought that all of those water issues were... <laughs> it, it's interesting, right? Because the building cost $4.5 million and was built three years ago. But just, again, the facility review... Is not just about the Grovedale, and and residents should look into it. But I well, I thought that was interesting. We're touching on that. Sorry, Steve. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna 
You go ahead, because I thought we were done on that. Well, there's a there's a whole lot of rumor mill going around in Cottom too about you know how everything's just getting torn down and they're getting left with a couple of storage containers. So yeah, it's a hot button topic. You hey, who needs libraries? Because Ruthven and Cottom apparently doesn't. <laughs> All right, congratulations, class uh, yes. of 2020, 2022, 23, 29, 23. What? <laughs> Congratulations to all of them. Yes, congratulations, graduates. Good luck. Have a fun summer. Not that you listen to us. It's just your parents and whatnot, but <laughs> we hope. yeah, we hope. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, like and subscribe. We're almost at 200, and you know what happens at 200? We go for 250. <laughs> uh, thanks to Gary Glass for production. Tune in next time for more of this on That Kingdom Podcast. Thanks, everyone. Mm-hmm.